What's going on, guys? Um, hope you're having a great day. And, um, uh, I got back from Myrtle Beach, um, last night. It was, like, it's Sunday, late at, not late at night, but it was Sunday, like, night. It was, like, 7 o'clock or something like that. And, um, got back at, like, 10.30, um, p.m. last night, so pretty long drive. It was a little rough, but, um, we are here in Manlius for the whole whole day today. Um, went to a driving range and um, packed some stuff. No, I didn't really do much today, but um, oh, we're back if you didn't see any of the Myrtle Beach videos. Um, go check those out. Um, I'm slowly kind of getting together like a little, um, I guess you can call it like a, a little like cave or bass cave or whatever you want to call it um, for like filming here. Um, I'm trying to slowly putting some things together and uh, it's coming out pretty good, so that's basically what's happening here. Just trying to get some organized stuff. And today we're gonna be going over like um, tackle and how to make a day box. So if you have a lot of tackle, too much to carry all of it around, and you don't, or you don't want to carry all of it around, and you might be just going to a creek or like a pond or something, you're gonna, not gonna want to take all of it. So you might just want a couple like boxes or even one box of just tackle. And with a little bit of everything in it that you can always use and like your go-to so um and that it, it can change day to day or not day to day but like month to month or season to season just depending on um what you need obviously so you might have to change it a few times a year but um like you always have your basic things that you can know you can catch fish on so uh, you're gonna keep a lot of your soft plastics in a bag or wherever you keep your soft plastic so you got like some Bass Pro a uh, watermelon swirl. So you want those rage tails. Uh, any kind of like crawfish or maybe you like um, um, creature bait or something like that. Some like smaller stuff for like, crappies. Um, swim baits. Um, these are just like little minnows. Got like bass one Echo six. And then we have the last mystery tackle box. The color changing. Um, uh, they're called straight shooters, and um, so you just want to keep uh, maybe not all your soft plastics you have a lot, but you know, a good amount because you can always catch fish on a on a um, on a worm or a stick -o or a sink. You can always any time of the year you can catch fish on those, or you know, crawfish maybe not sometimes in the year, but that's a go to bait um, that you should keep in your bag. And you can use crawfish and ridge tails and creature baits as even swim baits um, as jig trailers so and you're always gonna keep them um, jigs in your um, box but we're gonna get into how what we're gonna put mine on really, right now I don't have one but we're gonna make one so so right here is kind of like crappie box we got some smaller jigs um, some like spoons a few like in mind spinners and these are mostly crappy stuff you could do like trout fishing with these two but we're gonna keep these separate our our um day box is gonna be more for bass so if we ever want to go crappie fishing or we know we're gonna there's gonna be some crappies or panfish in the body water that we're fishing we'll just grab these and we'll take these along with us too so it's not that much it's only a box but now i have these smaller boxes full of like jerk baits and jigs and then kind of this miscellaneous box with that soft plastic so we need to get a little more organized here and then we got like our fly fishing stuff which we won't need um unless we know we're going fly fishing which then we'll take it and then you always need tools and not a lot of tools just like a pair of pliers probably a knife so that's just things you always are going to need just in case like a hook gets stuck in the fish or something so you need those, and then obviously you need hooks, so I actually have a small little box of hooks um, with the basic sizes in them. Obviously, if you are fishing where you need a bigger size or like a smaller size, bring those along with you, but um, for the most part, these sizes from 2 out to 3, those are your basic ones. And then here, we kind of got some terminal tackle. We'll always probably bring this along. Um, with you know, all the so it's got like weights and stuff. There's also some weights attached to my some um switch shot attack attached to my 
uh, bag, so you're gonna need those. And then this is gonna be the box that we can make the day box, so let me get started. Alright, so I took the stuff that was in this box out, and um, I had some soft plastics, and there's a couple like stretched out ones that I got rid of, and then I'm just going to throw the other ones in with another box that I have um, that's just full of soft plastics to get a little more organized. And um, sometimes like I took the soft plastics out of the box, or out of the bag, and if you can keep the bag, if it's like a resealable like zipper thing or whatever, it's always good to keep the bag. The bag keeps it more fresh and stuff, and so... Um, that's what I've slowly learned. Some of them don't have um, like a zipper or something, so you can take those out or you can leave them in um, opened. And then I just put those like a little like um, Ziploc bag, and then you can just throw that in your backpack. So you're gonna keep your day box, your pliers, your terminal tackle um, in your bag, but your bag's gonna be light, so without all the um, other boxes in. So unless you know you're going on a boat, if you have like a boat or something, you probably should bring on your tackle because you have enough room. And, you know, who knows, you might need something that you won't have in your day box. So um, so what's going on in the day box is we have a silver popper. Poppers, not the best springtime lure, but um, summertime, early fall, uh, that's probably when you want to use a popper. Or really any top water piece. Especially up north here, maybe if you live down south, um, and it gets warmer faster, then popper might be good for uh, mid to late spring. But up north, water's still cold throughout spring and into summer, so um, you're not gonna need that. And then also with your top water, your frog, you just pick a nice. I like to pick a nice silver colored popper. I also am gonna put a black um, colored popper in there, but your frog, just keep like a natural green color. Um, that's good if you have like other colored frogs, they might work with white, and a lot of people like to use white frogs. Um, um, if you have those, you probably shouldn't put those, but if you know you're going to use them, then take them. And then, we got a little like shad colored, um, oh, what are these called? I'm drawing a blank, this is bad. Uh, jury, or no, 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 no. crankbait. Oh, Whipple's crankbait. Good springtime um, bait and shrimp to burn. And then a medium diving crankbait and like chartreuse block top. Um, also put that in. That might not be the best for ponds. It could, if, especially if you're fishing something shallow, it could get um, caught up in the weeds. So that you're gonna bring a smaller. Maybe there's not really big bass and they're not gonna eat that. So you want to bring a smaller um, crankbait. Whipless or with a whip, I guess, if you just depending on your preference. And then you also want to bring a spoon, just one, um, whatever your favorite color is. You never know when you need one. I don't use uh, that very much, so, um, but you never know. And then from here, we go to your drip rate box. And Maybe grab like this is gonna be a nice color. It's just like silver shad color that'll be good for your well, that's pretty big, so I only really have three, so we're gonna pile them all on I guess. And we've got like a little small baby bass color. And then perch color perch will be good. I know some of the people down south um don't have perch in their waters. Um so maybe if you have some that might represent like a bluegill or uh, something like that, you put that in more for your box, which would be a better option for you. And then we're going on moving on to jigs now. So, the standard color that you always need for jig fishing is black and blue. Um, crucial. I always have that one, that's a good color. And then plain black is also a good one. So, we're gonna put that in. And then PB and J. Um, this is a good color. Maybe not as popular or as well used as the black and blue jig, but always a good one. This is a weedless, so you put that in and then just kind of a it's kind of a weird one. I'm not sure where I got this one from. It's like orange. 
Um, but put it, you know, put one strange color. That's a little smaller, so that's good too. And then we have a black and blue non weeless with kind of a different kind of um, like tail on it. So we'll put that one in also. And then um, that's going to be pretty much it. We really hit all of the good um, categories for your tackle, but we're also going to put in a few and then spinners. I know I mentioned these earlier in the video and they're great for um, great for panfish, crappie, trout, um, but you never know. Just take your couple, take one or two of your favorite colors. You know, generally probably a little bigger unless you're going like small mouth fishing then you could probably go for a little smaller one, but um, I really like this little gold one. It's got um, like a little kind of like a shape of a fish, a little silver spinner, and then uh, that one, this little silver one, it's very flashy, it'll attract fish, and then, so that's pretty much it for your day box, for your actual box box. So that's what you're going to want, you got a good amount of baits in here, and then remember always bring your hooks, because you know, you have your soft plastics too, which you can... Carolina rig or Texas rig or however, um, you know, maybe if it's weedless sometimes, if there's a lot of weeds in the pond, I don't use a Carolina rig because it gets all tangled and um, not fun and, you know, you want to get, with your crankbaits, you always want like a shallow water down, medium water one, so stay box. If you're fishing a lake, then bring a lake or like a large body of water, maybe a river, um, I would bring all your tackle or most of it. Um, because you're always going to need those options out there. You don't know where you're going to fishing. You might be on like a kayak or something. Um, who knows? The water temperature would be different. But if you're just, just more of a pond thing, you're having your day box. So if you're in a rush and you just need to get out to a pond, this day box is the way to go. You have not everything, but you have enough stuff to hit all the categories. And, you know, for instance, if we were going to a pond, we're probably, if I can get untangled here, we're probably not going to need an A rig or an Alabama rig or an umbrella rig, rig. depending on what you call it. It's probably not going to be your first option in a pond. Maybe it is, maybe it's a deep pond in that case. If you know where you're going, bring it. But this is just, they'll hit all your um, spots. You generally won't run out of anything that you'll need, and this is just good to have with you. Um, maybe you can put it in your car or something, so maybe if you just stop to fish, you see a pond, it, these will hit the baits, you can just test the waters, and you can see what they're liking, and then maybe you can fine-tune it next time you go to that pond. But remember, always use your hooks for your Carolina rig, Texas rig, you know, just stickos or dingers or whatever, so you always need those. And then, always jig trailers for your trailers, and, oh, we also, we missed one thing. Um, I don't have my bag with me, so I can't show these, but you're going to want to put a couple of spinner baits um, in your bag, too. Maybe not in the spring. Um, maybe later in the spring, um, summertime. That's generally good spinner bait time up here in the north. Um, so um, that's when you're going to want to put those put those in your bag for those. Um, I don't like to put them in the box because they get, like, they're too big and get tangled. So if you have, like, a little line cork, and you can stick the hooks right in, and you can put, like, four of them in there. It's a great way to store them. So, um, so I need to store something like that, but, so we bring lots of soft plastics. You want to hit varieties of colors. You never know what they're going to eat. Maybe bring a couple swim, um, so, you know, you need those. Always crawfish, especially during the spawning season, wherever that is. Um, looks like up north it's going to be pretty late this year, probably into the summer because, um, waters are still cold and some of the major there's still spots of ice in Lake Ontario so in the Great Lakes so you know that's gonna be pretty late later than usual maybe um um late May early June kind of dealio so yeah so you always need those cross for that that's great for that and hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe and thanks for watching